ACTSC, we believe that it's important that there are common rules at the European level. The number of deaths and of serious injuries is unacceptably high, so we have to do as much as possible to make sure that this decreases to very, very low levels until eventually we have no hepatitis any longer. Um, a common blood alcohol limit, yes, that would be very good. It's something we've been asking for for a long time. Uh, what would be this limit? Well, for us, there is no uh, drink driving. There should be no drink driving at all. There is no way in which you can think of taking the will after having had amounts of alcohol. So uh, uh, we are of the idea that these limits should be common at the European level and should be as simple as zero. So there are no calculations to make. You just had a drink so you cannot drive. That's the most important thing. Also, when it comes to speed, yes, this is important. We are asking for uh, um, a common European limit that could be um, from 120 or below. And it's important also that this gets enforced. And when it comes to urban areas, for example, we encourage local authorities to have, uh, um, in some residential areas, to have limits at 30 kilometers an hour, because this is uh, uh, um, the speed in which traffic, different forms of road users can uh, easily mix without fear of, uh, uh, um, uh, um, of devastating uh, um, consequences. First and foremost, speed. Speed remains the biggest contributory factor to road deaths in the European Union. So uh, we need to tackle speed from all areas with technology, and I'm thinking here of intelligent speed assistance, with enforcement, with infrastructure, with behavior. Drink driving. Uh, everybody knows that uh, drink driving is a problem, uh, but still, there are too many people who are drink driving. Once again here, technology can help with the alcohol interlocks for uh, um, some particular um, categories of drivers, like the drivers of school buses, of heavy goods vehicles, so professional drivers, uh, those who are recidivists, those who have an alcohol problem. Uh, enforcement is also very important, a common BAC limit at the European level. The vehicle, third uh, element which uh, uh, remains very important, There's, there have been uh, um, many improvements compared to the past in vehicle safety, but the work is not finished. For example, uh, uh, when it comes to the use of seat belts, we should aim to a use that is around 99% on the front seats and on the rear seats. Uh, seat belt reminders are mandatory for the driver's seat. Well, this should be the same also for uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the passenger seat and those in, uh, um, in the rear. It's important that procedures for uh, testing in the European directives are aligned to the more stringent ones of Euro NCAP. It's important that we concentrate on active safety technologies, on prevention of accidents, advanced emergency braking systems, lane departure warning. So you see also in the vehicle there is a lot to do. Fourth measure, infrastructure. Uh, for example, we have a directive uh, on uh, infrastructure safety with four uh, uh, instruments, road safety impact assessment, road safety audit, network safety management, road safety inspection, which is mandatory for the 10T network. Well, uh, the European uh, Commission is going to um, propose a revision of this directive. We hope that uh, this is extended as much as possible to the rural road network, to the urban areas, to areas where uh, the um, uh, um, safety safety levels are less uh, good than uh, on the 10T network where we can uh, um, certainly have uh, um, important improvements by the use of these uh, instruments. Uh, number five, uh, um, I'm thinking about the importance of also thinking about serious injuries. So far uh, we've only concentrated on uh, road deaths, however uh, road deaths represent only the tip of the iceberg and uh, uh, fortunately the Commission has uh, proposed a new definition for uh, serious injuries at the European level to make data comparable. It is now important to set a target for the halving of road injuries as well as uh, uh, to have a serious strategy for uh, uh, tackling this uh, um, important road safety problem. You asked for five questions. May I also add uh, a bonus priority which for me is work-related 
road safety because this has to do with the five that I've just mentioned. Uh, uh, um, many roads that are linked to uh, either driving for work or driving to and from work. So it is important also um, employers, authorities and all those who are responsible for uh, uh, um, a fleet and uh, for employees who are on the road uh, or who use the road as part of their work or for going to work well, they do take responsibility also for making sure that uh, uh, you do not die while driving for work or driving to work. I would like to answer this by saying that there are important synergies between uh, um, safety on the one side and uh, um, congestion and pollution. And uh, once again, I would concentrate on the issue of speeding. Uh, if we manage to reduce speed on urban areas, well, we will certainly make sure that there is uh, uh, less congestion and less uh, pollution. Uh, there are huge synergies between uh, these three areas of work and uh, we should see this as together. Uh, there are countless studies that show that uh, reducing the average speed and also at the same time making sure that there is an homogeneous speed in urban areas will certainly improve uh, the environment and will ease congestion. It is important that uh, uh, whatever the means of transport that uh, Europeans and uh, road users choose, it is important that they have high levels of safety. Unfortunately, this is not yet the case for uh, uh, motorcycles uh, powered two-wheelers. They are certainly overrepresented in road safety statistics, uh, and it is important that things are done. Uh, from all aspects, uh, we start with the vehicle. Uh, there is a, a very important regulation that has been approved at the European level, and uh, which will improve uh, the, uh, the, the, the vehicles themselves. For example, uh, uh, all those uh, uh, motorcycles above 125 cc's will have to have uh, ABS, uh, which is very good. Uh, um, we also encourage uh, um, producers of uh, um, smaller motorcycles to also uh, make sure that these are fit with, uh, fitted with, uh, um, with the ABS. Uh, new motorcycles will also have automatic headlights on, so uh, all uh, uh, the um, lights will be automatically switched on when, uh, when you drive the motorcycle and this is really important for in terms of conspicuity, especially now that also cars have daytime running lights. The infrastructure needs to be improved also for power to wheels. The infrastructure too often has been built in the past uh, with the road drivers, uh, with the car drivers in mind. And uh, what could be in the infrastructure could be just a minor inconvenience for uh, uh, a car driver may represent an important safety problem for uh, um, a power two-wheeler and of course behavior uh, and here I'm talking about the behavior of the riders well they need to uh, make sure that when they ride the motorbike they are aware of the fact that they are a vulnerable uh, uh, um, road user so to take particular care also in uh, uh, dealing with the others but it is also important that uh, uh, the behavior of the car drivers is improved that they know that they have to share the road with the uh, motorbikes and that they uh, take particular care also for uh, uh, these vulnerable uh, uh, um, road users. Yes, we agree. E. coli uh, is uh, such an easy win that uh, should have been approved before without delays uh, and uh, not wait until 2017. However, there are still benefits that we need to take and it's important that we do our utmost to make sure that uh, uh, these are taken. Uh, I would say that, of course, uh, the benefits will be much higher in uh, non-urban settings, in particular areas of the European Union, where uh, we can expect uh, uh, response time and uh, without the call would be uh, much higher. And I also think that in uh, a Europe that is increasingly mobile, well, it is important that those, for example, who don't know their whereabouts, those who don't know uh, the language of the country in which they are uh, driving, may rely on a technology that will uh, uh, make sure that uh, um, 
emergency services in case uh, of a collision arrive as early as possible. So uh, there are benefits to be exploited and uh, uh, e-call is uh, yet another measure which we should support.